宇宙世紀ダブルオーセブンティナイト一月三日。後に一年戦争と呼ばれる戦いが始まった。地球連邦軍とジオン軍の戦いは熾烈を極め、多くの生命が失われた。人々は戦いに飽き、一刻も早い終結を望んだが。戦いは膠着状態に陥り、その望みが叶うとは思えなかった。だが、開戦から10ヶ月余り経過したこの日、戦いは予想外の急展開を迎える。グラナダ基地で軍事クーデターが発生し、その首謀者はキシリア少将だということが判明したのだ。さらにその動きに呼応するかのようにキシリア機関の部隊は世界各地で一斉に軍事行動を開始するこのような事態を一体誰が予想できただろうか矢継ぎ早にもたらされる予想外の報告に誰もが耳を疑ったそしてそれらの事態に追い打ちをかけるかのようにシリア少将から歴史を覆す緊急声明が発せられる今戦いは新たな局面を迎えようとしていた人類は我ら正当なるジオンによって正しく導かねばならない人の確信はすぐそこにあるだが私利私欲に目がくらんだ愚か者どもにはそれが見えないのだだからこそ我らが示してみせねばならん選ばれし正当ジオンの戦士たちを私に力を貸してほしい人類の未来のために正当なるジオンのためにジオンの育成を思うキシリア様のお心必ずや国民も理解してくれるでしょう、うん、きれいごとだけでは政治はできませんしかし兄上のやり方はひどすぎる真知をお察ししますこの幕で命を懸けてキシリア様をお守りしますその言葉忘れぬぞところでキシリア様シャアの入隊部部隊のことですがあまり信用なさらない方が良いのではないでしょうか<笑>貴様がシャアのことをよく思っていないことは知っているだが戦力の乏しい我々にとって彼らの力は必要なのだ申し訳ありません差し出がましいことを迷いシャアのことは戦いの後で考えればよい開発部より新兵器の開発プランが提案されました開発部の提案をご覧になりますかああ、ライトでんフォークス <laughs> Love doing that. Anyway, new campaign hype. Yay! Finally, Kaisio is Zeon because we finished up to Laws a few days ago. And by that I mean about a week ago because, you know, re recording and all. Um, so to warn you guys, if you don't know, I recorded this once before, but like, but the video codex got corrupted or something. And Sony Vegas was rendering this to a black screen, but it was giving all the correct audio. So, I have to re record this. And I'm not just dubbing it over, recording something different, and using the same recording, because that would be lazy. So, I've already experienced this a little bit, and I'm not going to be as surprised at what the enemy has. I will warn you one thing, which I find bullshit. So, um, in this game, and if you've noticed this start, it's the exact same as Neo Zeon of Castleville. Well, on these campaigns, Zeon starts with all the pilots we don't have. And they get almost their best units. Because this is 
after most of the stuff in this is like October or something of the one year war or November anyway so most of their units they get they get the MSO8 Xeon people and their best units so not only do you have to fight Norris in a golf custom which it's a well trained Norris and he's at like rank B so he'll kick your ass but they also get Aina and her older brother meaning they get the Absolus 2 and 3 on the first turn, they will kick our ass. I haven't noticed that in uh, the Neo Zeon Castball one, because I haven't attacked anyone on Earth yet. But when I do, I will probably be fighting a bunch of Absoluses, because they are freaking flying big zombs. And the only real way to kill them is to throw bodies at them until they run out of energy, and then overwhelm them. I can't afford to do that this early in the game. So, yeah, we're going to have to avoid it. They're currently here. I know this because it's the first one I attacked last time. Um, yeah, we're not attacking there this turn. We're going to attack China instead. We don't have any troops there, so we're going to invest in spying. Always do this first, all the time, every episode, every turn. And except for that one time in the Xeon campaign where I forgot, but that was because I'm stupid. But anyway, so we're going to try to we're going to try to get that at full as quickly as we can so we can see the enemy tech levels and whatnot. But, they have six here, and they have seven here. There's also two mobile armors here, so we're avoiding that. But, before we actually issue any movements or look at any units, first thing we need to do is look at pilots. Though, I will point something out. We have Hawaii. You can't drop on Hawaii. So, we don't actually have to protect this after we capture California and New Zealand. But, we're going to have to protect this for a while till we can attack these places. I believe Amaro's in California, and while we could kill him, we can't use our best units in California right now. We only have- we have a sub and the Adzom. We'll use those to take New Zealand. But, first we are going to look at the units. So, first of all, we have this guy. Um, he was in the Mad Angler squad, which was one of Kaecilia's special units. So, we have him, he's just terrible. We will train him. We have to in this campaign. Um, Andy. Am I right? <laughs> is, that's Andy, right? Um, he's from War in the Pocket. He's the one who died really early on. He wasn't the one who piloted the camphor. He was the one who died before that. There's Enron or Elron. It's Elron. Yeah. But I'm going to call him Enron. If you know why... I'm in marketing. If you know why, I, good, you know things. If you don't, Google it. It was terrible. I wasn't al Yeah, I was alive for that. I was just really young. There's... Mash? Gaia and... Well, one of the other guys from... Uh, MSO8. These are Black Tri-Stars. Um... I can't read that. So yeah, that's a guy. Or Garcia. I didn't know that. I didn't know she worked as chief. Kaecilia in her uh, leader getup. She's only in this game. This is the special one. She gets a lot better. I actually think, actually think at rank S she becomes a new type. I'm not exactly sure. I know uh, what's his name. Um, Revel becomes a new type in all the other campaigns. There's that guy who's Kiri. Kuritsuga? Yeah, he, this generic guy. Worry about this guy. Um, if he's in your army and you have a lesser ranked officer with you, his charisma, which is only six, gets applied to everyone. Like, if you have him in the same army as Char, his six charisma will override Char's 15. Stay away from these guys. If you can, just keep them in Mu size up in space, along with Kaecilia, because her charisma is 10, and she'll always override everyone else because she's leader. Uh, military ranks are important, supposedly, and they don't stack. But, yeah. Uh, Charlie Abul, or no, um, Cusco I. The old guy's Charlie Abul. This is, she's a new type, and at rank C, she is a new type, so we're all good. And she has an Elmuth, I believe. Char. He's a new type, too. I don't know if he gets new type abilities yet, but he's a good pilot anyway. And we're not gonna put him into a new type mobile suit in this campaign, I bet. Unless we get the Zeong before that. Or we put him in this campaign special unit. Which I don't know if I'm going to take that or not. 
I probably will because it's awesome, but it only works on the planet, so. Uh, this is Charlie Bull. He's not a new type till rank B. He doesn't start at rank B in this one or in the Neo Zeon Castle Ball, and he starts in a bra bow, or bra bow. So we're going to have to train him. Um... Yeah, I don't know that one. That's that guy. He's the leader from um, from War in the Pocket. He also has the best stats of the four, I believe. We have Johnny Ridden. We're Kaecilia, what do you expect? Um, starts in a Galgoog. I don't actually think we get Galgoogs in this campaign, since uh, Giran has the, uh, Giran has Galgoogs. I think we get Gyans. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but that's what I've read. Um, Simis. She should start in a bra bow, but I don't know if she does. Um, I'll try to train her, but she's kind of worthless. So what'll probably happen is we'll stick her in a Goff Commander and just have her get killed repeatedly until we can train her to rank C. Which then she gets kind of good. She gets like Job John level good. Which he's not all that great. One of those guys who I don't care to learn his name. The guy in the B Grow, who I also don't care to learn his name. This guy, he's also one of those commanders. Toriatsuga? Uh, Aratsupa. Yeah, okay. I don't care about this guy. He's worse than that other one. Keep them in space. They deserve to be in space. He's like a general, or he's like an admiral or something. Though I think they call them generals. I don't know if they uh, westernized the ranks as well. I know they, rest, uh, they westernized a lot of the names. Um, we start with Nimbus, and he does have the effort custom, so we might get Blue Destiny stuff. Even though we have another unit who says we shouldn't, but we might. If we do get the BDU2, we will use that with quite a few pe with quite a few of our old types. Because I think the Blue Destiny works in space. Which, if we can put our new types in the- or our old types in those, we can make them into new types. Not very good new types, but still new types. And if we put, uh, new types in them, they actually get better. Which will be really useful if we can get an S-level Char, because he'll be like an S+. And he gets a lot of really good stats when you break the when you break the game like that. Bernie. Uh, Weisman? Weisman? Something like that? Yes. We will train him. His stats actually get okay. He can match Christina, which she's actually a pretty good pilot. And I just like using Bernie, because why not? And this guy, uh, Goro... Goromu? Or Paromu. Paromu? Yeah, something like that. Um, best of the three commander, those three admiral-ish guys we have. We'll probably use him if we can. Or this guy, who's a bit better. I don't know who that is. Not at all. But he does have a funny hat, so. That guy. Makube. Or Mikube. He's a cube. He has the creepiest voice in that uh, narration, doesn't he? Holy crap. He has an Adzom. Those are useful. Oh, and these guy, or this guy has a Zaku Tukai. That's not all that impressive in this campaign. But yeah, he has an Adzom. We'll probably get him out of the Adzom and put him in a Goth till we get Gion's, and then, yeah. We'll use him just because his stats are okay. He's terrible at melee, but pretty good at ranged. He has 14 in ranged. Um, and this is Ortega, right? Yeah. I'm assuming that's Ortega. Yeah, it's just weird. Marion Welsh. I don't know why we have her, but we get blue... I think we get blue Destiny stuff, even though we have her. But she's not a new type to rank B either, so we're going to have to train her up as a new type. She's much better in melee than she is in shooting. So she's actually better for a mobile suit if you can get her one. Um... We're probably not going to use people in space for a while, so we'll probably just stick them in mobile suits as soon as we develop Goth Customs, or Goth Commanders. Uh, Mikhail, or Mikhailovich, whatever it is. It's probably Mikhail. Um, Mikhail. Mikhaya? Mikhaya. Okay, this is Mikhail, just because I know how to pronounce that one. Um, that guy piloted the camper. I believe he died in that fight. I could be wrong. And finally, Lala. I don't know what more to say about Lala, except for we're keeping in her, we're keeping her in a new type mobile suit till we absolutely have to take her out of one. B 
because she is pure death. Though if we can train her without getting attacked, we will. So, that's our units. Um, yes. Whoops. Didn't mean to click that. Next, we're actually going to look at the troops. That guy, Adzom. We start with those. We also start with Ogos. I don't think we... Yeah, I don't think we should have those yet. They're not all that useful, but still. It's like, those were really late war, weren't they? It's just because their tech level is so low. We could actually use them similar to how I use Dops in this game, but we're not going to, because Ogos are just terrible. Gah. I'll try to use Gahs a lot more in these campaigns. I've, I don't use them before. I don't like using them, but I'll try to use them better. Um, they're pretty useful. Gattles. Big Trey. Goth A, we start with it, and the Goth B, which is really nice, because mostly you have to research those. Guazine, Za or Gog, Zaku Cannon, Zaku Tank, Radar Zaku, Aqua Zaku, Zincrello. Um, we might actually put Lala in one of those. They act uh, they're pretty good with new types, supposedly. I haven't tried it yet, but we might stick her in one just to see. Zaku C, Zaku F, Zaku J, Commander Zaku, and the reason why I'm showing you all this, Zaku 2 Kai. We start with them in this campaign. Much, much, much better off than Neo Zeon of Castleville. Because since we have these, we can actually stand up against Zeon in the beginning. They still have Dom 2s, so we're kind of in trouble, but we can fight them. And we are going to use these to sparehead our assault till we get Doms. Or Dom 2s, at least. We will use these on the ground for most of the game. But we're not going to fight in space in the beginning. I'll explain that a little later. Zaku R1, the Zaku 1. If you really want to get cheap, the Zaku R1A, which is a mass production version, the Zanzibar, uh, those purple things that deploy energy shields, very useful if you have them, but if you don't, don't buy them, they're kind of crap. Zegox, which we start with, very nice since we control Hawaii, uh, Chive, Desert Zaku, not the good one, or the Zaku Desert. Yeah, this is a is a, uh, yeah, it's the Zaku Desert. The one's the best. The other one's a much, the other one's like a Hizak, which is much better. But I like these. We'll use them a lot probably, unless we're using Zaku twos. Dops, uh, Dobies, Papua, uh, the improved Papuas, the actual Papua. That's actually called Papua. I don't know what that one's called. Uh, oh, Doros, Doros, something like that. Storosu. Square is Ro, and then the other one's Su. But yeah. Uh, Bigoro. Uh, the Hadolfer? Hadolfa? I don't know, I'm not German. It's the tank that transforms. Uh, Fat Uncle. We might use these. They're cheaper than Gauze, but I like Gauze better because they move farther. M Late type Musa. No, uh, Musa Kai. Uh, Goth prototype. The. Mad Angler sub, which proves we've already done the Mad Angler stuff, even though our territory doesn't reflect that. Uh, and a couple of people died before that, and they're in the game, so ignore everything that would that happened in G Gundam. It never happened. Uh, the Magellan tank, the Zaku or the Musai Kai. No, this is the normal Musai. Yeah, the normal sub, the other ship from. Uh, MS Igloo, Lugan, and HLV. So, that is all we start with. And if you want to be enterprising, uh, go on to the wiki and go fill in some of this information since I gave it to you guys. It's all right up there. I'll probably do that later if you don't because I'm lazy and I don't want to do that myself. But first of all, we have... These guys are in Hawaii. Um, these guys are in Malaysia. Or no, these guys are in Japan. Char gets his own custom Zegok. We will use most of his custom units in this one. Except for the Dom. Because that's space only, sadly. Um, and we might even use his custom Gaian if we get there. Which I will try to use Gaians if I get to that level. Or Gions. And we'll probably actually put him in this Zok. Because Zoks are nice and putting him in an Act Guy is kind of worthless. I know I used one in the show, but still. Some Zogs. And we might just stick Mikube in one of these. After we attack Torrington, though. Yeah, this is also what's cool. They start with a Zgok E, K 
can't get that for four tech levels. High gogs can't get those for five tech levels. And we have four of them. We will totally wreck face if we get the chance. Lugans, I'll actually use those. He starts in a Zanzibar, which works on space and land, and can help you attack space. So after we grab some tech point or after we grab some production points, we're gonna start attacking space too, and just try holding the atmosphere. The effort Kai. Zgox, Zog, or Gogs. I keep calling them Zogs, I apologize. Something else. Some that guy, some Lugans. Um, yeah, they start in these ships. He starts in a Brobo. Uh, Bravo. Bigro. We could upgrade that into a sub if we wanted, but I'm not going to. Uh, he starts with a Zincrello. I don't remember those being in the show, but they probably were. Late class Musai, can't build those for two tech levels. Johnny Ridden starts in a Galgoog. We can't produce those in this one, I think. Or this might be the prototype version. I'm not sure. But I think we still get the prototype, even if we take Gaians. But yeah, so he starts in a mobile suit we can't get yet. That means that Zeon can. And if Zeon can get them, we're in trouble. Because Galgoogs can almost match a Gundam. Yeah. So we need to try to conquer Zeon as quickly as we can. Uh, Simus. Another Bravo. Not a new type at all, I believe, so no point in really training them. We'll use this as a replacement for Chalia's if his gets broken. Um, Skaddle, late class. Of course, she has an Elmith. She has an Elmith. She has an Elmith. That's why we're going to attack Abel Q in the beginning, even though my plan's different. But I'll explain that in a second. Some more Zaku's. They have their special Black Tristar Zaku's. We will actually use those this time. They don't have custom doms, though, which is sad. I think they have custom guy ants, though. I could be wrong. I always get those mixed up. And yeah, we're starting over. And yeah, we did that. So my plan will be short and easy. We're not going to get to the battle this turn. You might have told, figured out that I was delaying a little bit. But I tried squishing this in in the last time, and it took almost an hour. So I'm just dividing this into two episodes. Live with it. But anyway, so my plan for here is we're going to move all these guys to here. We're going to move all these people here. We're going to leave those here, actually, because they're going to get attacked. But we're going to move the Black Tri-Stars and this Musai out to here. We're moving here, which has three Elmiths in a row. We're moving them to attack Aboa Q. If you guys have seen my Neo Zeon of Castleville campaign you know that this battle is going to be very easy. They have nine. They have 15 possible units. That's not gonna be that difficult. But first, four, six, 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 five. Okay, so we're sending these guys back over to the moon and then we'll have them help out in Abo Q. And then we're gonna capture this and we're just gonna surround side three for a while. I've, I used to leave this one open, but that'll leave them to attack Abo Q, and they'll just keep doing it, and I don't want to keep defending it. So we're going to surround side three for a while. Um, while in my Neo Zeon of Castleval campaign, I'm focusing mainly on space. In this one, instead, I'm going to focus on the planet. So with my plan here is we're going to leave the Federation for a while. We can kill the Federation fairly easily, because we out they out-tech us by three levels, but for the Federation, until they get to tech level 12... We outbeat them in everything but straight up ground combat. So we're going to try to avoid that. Instead, we're going to attack mostly their water provinces, but we're going to leave the Federation alone for a while after we take Torrington, because after we take Torrington and uh, China and Madras from Xeon, they're going to start fighting each other, mostly for North America. Whereas if we keep enough units in there, they won't attack Hawaii, and if they do attack Hawaii, we win at land, or we win in water. So, Zeon's only an issue. If the Federation attacks us, we only have to worry about the White Pace and the Gundam, and that's not that hard a fight. So what we're going to do is, first thing with these troops here, which has Bernie in them, we're going to have them attack Northern Australia. We're going to have McCube and all these guys attack this place. I'm going to call this New Zealand. It's technically called Pacific, but Hawaii is also in the Pacific. So we're going to attack New Zealand with these guys. We're going to attack Northern Africa here, and then we're going to attack Torrington with both of those two. So we can take Torrington. Um, with Char and his people who are here, we are going to attack... 
uh, the production point in China. Um, with these guys, we're going to attack the major China, major area of China. Um, hopefully, if they send in Absoluses to attack, we're just going to retreat. But if they don't, we'll capture this place, and then we'll build a wall basically here. And then we'll have a border here, here, and here. We might even grab southern South America just so we can hold it. And <coughs> we'll eventually cross over to Alaska, and then we'll just stay in Alaska. And we'll have a border there, and we'll let Zeon and the Federation fight. When we have all of those... Oh, and we're also going to... Um, after we grab Torrington, we're going to move over and just occupy this. So they keep trying to defend Kilimanjaro and Madras and strip their defenders from over here. We're gonna, after that, we're going to let the Federation and Zeon fight each other. Um, the Federation should occupy most of this. And while the Federation is worrying about Earth, we're going to swoop in, grab uh, Solomon and Luna 2, the rest of the atmosphere. And we're just going to stick like 40-ish units somewhere in the atmosphere and hold that till. Um, we're ready to take either side three or Jaburo. I think we're going to take out Zeon first because Zeon's more of an enemy. Jaburo, while they will tech up very fast, at level 12, they get, uh, Zuck, or GM specials, or, yeah, the ones from Stardust Memory, you know, the bluish ones that Burning piloted. Yeah, so when they get those, we're kind of in trouble. If they get to 15, they get GM Kells, which we really are in trouble for not at tech level 12 or so. Uh, the GM Krieger, or the Gaian Krieger, is really, really good. So, after we get the Gaian, we will start attacking the Federation more. But, we can leave the Federation for a while, because while if, as long as we keep a sea border, uh, our Zgox are dramatically better than Aqua GMs. You guys have seen that, probably. And, we're not in any real trouble. But, that also reminds me. First thing I always do in this campaign... The enemy can only see numbers, like us. They can't... They pretend like they don't know what we have. So, we are going to produce three Zaku 2 uh, Kais and some Dops. Though we should be producing some Dobais too, I just use all Dops. They'll just see that we have a bunch of units because we're going to produce a bunch of really cheap units. So, we'll have like 15 Dops in here defending. If we get attacked, we're kind of screwed unless they send a white base at us. Then we just surround it. But they won't attack if we have either 15 or 20 units unless they vastly outnumber us. And since it'll be a water province, they can't vastly outnumber us unless they're using Aqua GMs. Which, if they do that, we outrun them with DOPs till our, re our main reinforcements come in. Which will also keep a couple of Zgox here, but we won't produce those for a while. Um, so, we'll defend Hawaii using a bunch of planes, because why not? Um, after we grab Torrington... We'll leave some units in northern Australia so they can't drop on us from space. But Torrington will be relatively safe. Um, after we grab China, we'll have this kind of border. And then we'll just block these three. Or if we can, we'll grab Madras. Um, as soon as the Federation attacks Europe, they're going to send most both the Absoluses over to here. Either here or southern Africa. Whichever gets attacked first, they'll send the Absoluses over. If we can capture them before the Absoluses get back, we're good. Because if you don't know, the Absolus basically acts like a floating big zomb. It can move like seven spaces and fire the beam. So, yeah. If it worked in space, it would be way overkill. But it doesn't, so we're okay. Yeah, we've done spying. Oh, and I skipped this earlier on because most of you have already seen it, but... Zuda, the commander version of the Zuda, doesn't actually explode in this game. I was really surprised, even though it should. Well, if you get shot down, it explodes, but if you use it too much, it doesn't explode. We're not going to get it, though. We don't have that kind of cash. The flapper or flipper, radar Zaku with a machine gun. Not all that great, unless you use radar Zaku's re relatively well. Uh, the C2, with, or the R2, this is the commander version of the R1. Um, we can get a custom one for Johnny Ridden, I think, but we're not going to yet. Z uh, the heavy armor goth, we need one of those. The flight goth, we need one of those as well. And the Danube class. I don't like those, they don't move very far, so we're not getting any. The reason we're getting these two is they get us doms. Um, after we develop both of those two, we'll get the prototype dom, and then after we get the prototype dom, we get the real dom. And then next tech level, we get the rick dom. Which will help us out everywhere. But we're not actually investing in tech just yet. If you... Or, 
Actually, we're going to just very cheaply. I need to keep it up because they out-tech us by, like, four levels right now. So if we don't keep investing, we will get screwed. But, yeah. So that is the planning episode. Uh, the next episode will be coming in about a half hour. If you're watching this, that should be okay. And if you're watching this later, you won't even notice. But yeah, so the next episode will come in about a half hour. This will feature all our all five of our battles. We have these four here, and then Abo Q, which will be easy. And yeah, that battle should be like, or that episode should be like 45 minutes. Um, next week for me is Thanksgiving. It's the 21st right now, so in six days is Thanksgiving. So I'm going to be gone for the week. So I'm not going to be able to record more than these two episodes. Because I basically need to record like five more today just so I don't I'm not a few videos short next week but I am leaving today so I'm only going to record one but next week I'll try to record two or three so yeah I'll keep back up with and then I'll have these regularly on Sunday mornings at 9 30 a.m pacific standard time so yeah you can wait for them then I'm getting better at getting them all on time yeah <laughs> Anyway, this is the first episode in the series, so you should like it because it makes this one pop up when people search it. Well, when they search the specific tag, because that's how YouTube works. But anyway, you should like it, and that one guy can dislike it, I don't care. He does it for all my other videos. So, <laughs> anyway, I'll probably cut that out. But goodbye.